Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today we're going to be talking about Ghost, the publication platform. I'm joined by Dave Darns. Hi Dave, how's it going? Have you had a good week? Hiya. Uh, yeah, I've had a pretty good week. Um, it's been feeling kind of warm. It's a bit <laughs> warm, you know. It's not. I've got a fan down here somewhere that I try and keep cool, but yeah, it's it's been all right. How how's yours? You know, it's the end of the week, which is always nice to be at. So uh, yeah, lots of lots of work, bitty bitty work, you know. So I haven't really finished like a big thing. Uh, mm. But I've finished lots of little things, if that makes sense. So um, they all amount up to something in the end, which is all yeah, good. Yeah, the add up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be talking about Ghost. Now, Ghost is a publication platform. But before we do, let's talk about your background. How long have you been a developer for? Uh, I've been more or less a developer for about 10 years. Um, the reason why I say more or less is because I started in graphic design mm. and then switched over to kind of, well I switched over pretty quickly to web stuff um and I've got my reasons for like I'll, I'll go into those reasons Ooh, in a bit <laughs> yeah okay so graphics design where did you where did you start that was that uh, through college or uni or or yeah you... yeah I started um I, well I I I used to be pretty good at drawing at, at school mm. <laughs> when my dad didn't cheat for me and drew my pictures <laughs> for me <laughs> sometimes we're doing for me and then get like a lower grade like <laughs> just ruin my, my GCSEs but um yeah so I did multimedia at college uh yeah college and so we did a little bit of web design there a lot of you know the old table stuff table websites mm. a lot of shopping mm. or or should I say fireworks Ooh, like yeah, yeah. That's, you're dating yourself now oh well, yeah <laughs> We're going to whip out all the classics The old now. Macromedia suite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Macromedia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did a bit of that at college, and then I did interactive design at Lincoln University or University of Lincoln, mm -hmm. and I did a little bit more web design then. Uh, like, the course seems to apply to my job fairly well. Uh, and then got into the industry and just try to find a job wherever you can and you know the, the whole job landscape is, mm. a, is a difficult thing to enter for anybody um so I just kind of got into the first junior role I could and yeah just started doing graphic design stuff and then the thing I got into was I did a lot of flash banners okay a lot of them like for um various like magazine labels and stuff like that yeah so I kind of weirdly transi transitioned from print design into like flash and like a lot of like animation stuff and okay. then switched again into like coding so that kind of they kind of went together because of action script yeah stuff. I was gonna say that yeah because yeah. um because a lot of the ma well the macromedia at the time was using action script I think like action script two and three and all that jazz that which was very close to JavaScript so is that is that kind of how your how the jump off between graphic and coding worked sort of I mean um I think in that realm more to do with like the visual mm. really because flash Flash be good for like drawing stuff in there. It's quite smooth, like vector drawing tool. So I did a lot of graphic stuff in there, and then it was just a, probably about the time when Apple were dropping the whole Flash thing that every, I kind of caught that just at the right time to switch to like web mm. stuff. So I started playing around with web things more and graphics there, and then kind of just kept playing around with code. And then mm. the not. I wouldn't say it's an epiphany moment, but like it was a very like it was definitely a switch to go. Yeah, I should do more of this mm -hmm. is um, my work. My first job was like, oh, can we use like WordPress to save ourselves a bit of time, like mm -hmm. building out a CMS because we were building it custom at the time. Mm -hmm. So can we use WordPress? And I was like, oh, well, I'll have a look at WordPress, see what it's all about. And I got a friend from college, Ben, mm. um, if you're listening, Ben, <laughs> I, <laughs> he he spent the time in the evenings to show me how like WordPress works and the whole template hierarchy. And then, uh, the rest is, the rest is history really. It's kind of like, that's where it sparked from. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, you does, you owe Ben a few beers then. <laughs> Yeah, 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 a few beers. He he he, he likes a, he likes a mocha or two, so I, okay. I give him a mocha. Nice, nice. So, um, 
WordPress, um, was that, were you developing plugins for that, um, that were specific to the content management stuff that you were dealing with? Um, not plugins. I have had a go at plugins, but mainly themes. Right. I'm big, like theme person. I like all sorts of themes on all sorts of platforms. That's why I've dabbled in other things after WordPress. Like, um, I contributed a lot to anchor CMS, which is another like open source PHP CMS. Cool. Um, did a lot of themes, theme stuff around it. Not necessarily lots of themes, but like dabbled in the theme stuff quite a bit. Yeah. And, um, I made, uh anchorthemes.com so you can kind of there's a directory site of all the old uh themes for anchor which is kind of lost pace over the years but um yeah so i've always been interested in theming and and i just kept kind of growing on that and mm -hmm. i guess that's why i like css so much as well because right right it's a theming thing isn't it it's like yeah. you can style stuff that's a kind of whole so it sounds like yeah it sounds like you you've um you didn't just drop the graphics it sounds like you were coding mm. with the graphics very yes. closely yes yeah, so, yeah. so you didn't just suddenly go into a complete back-end development sort of role no i kind of i i did like a gradient over and then i tried my best to straddle the two sides yeah. of design and um and coding and and despite that the despite the industry being really good at straddling those areas mm. you tend to fall into more one than the other just mm. because of how quickly you work in that area or what have you and 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 how much money it makes in the end you know <laughs> like the you know the reality of it mm. and front-end development has got that little bit more well it shouldn't have more it shouldn't be more lucrative but the industry is and what people pay for is like lines of code rather than sure yeah. opinionated design. Yeah, that's an interesting topic itself because I guess with yeah. front end stuff, you're also dealing with um, responsive designs with different mm. mobile platforms and stuff. Whereas the, with the back end, you don't necessarily worry about that data as data at the end of the day. However, it's being consumed. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean that's a topic for an, for another day, I think. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. a that's a big rabbit hole to fall down. What what inspired you to actually start getting? You know, what what inspired you to do all this? Um, I guess I guess inspiration is like like when when I was working at when I was doing stuff at university and college and things like you always just want to like get to like the end result. You always want to like mm. get to the end point and it would be often the case where you go your lecturer would say well you need all your workings out you need to show that working out and you would want to do the exact opposite you just want to get to the end thing as soon as possible yeah, yeah. and with graphic design that's quite hard to achieve because you've got to like print it or you've got to go like use silk screen or mm -hmm. um source the materials and it's, it's quite a, like a lengthy process and there's it's not everything can be to hand whereas like web development and building something on the internet which is such a kind of space like there's so everyone now has access pretty much everyone has access to the internet and you can make stuff on there and share it with people and all you need is a computer like that, mm. that's what you need whereas graphic design you need a printer you need a uh like a print shop or what have you mm. it's, it's it's far more accessible to make stuff that's so, what, so yeah so there's a, a lower barrier of entry isn't there that's it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. cool and, the, and 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 was it the fact that um the the feedback loops were smaller and therefore it was that was the thing that was pushing you to do more and more uh yeah i guess so i quite like that kind of you you're able to change stuff that is that is a thing that you kind of I sit, I remember quite a bit you're like with graphic design like I remember printing something and there'll be a typo in it and I go that's the end of that that's, that, <laughs> that typo is there forever that's it end of story mm -hmm. whereas web design and like coding and stuff like that if somebody sees something you can get mm -hmm. in there and change and rectify it and mm -hmm. can improve there's, there's never an end to like the improvement I mean you obviously shouldn't chase perfection but you can you can constantly iterate and you can constantly build on those things mm -hmm. um and that's that's how all my like open source stuff has kind of ended up being like you keep building on it and keep building on it until mm -hmm. you know you, you you got it into a good place mm. 
So can you talk me through how you, uh, you, you moved from that position in coding? So you've, 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 you've taken the decision to go from graphics, print design to coding. How did that transition into uh, being an open source uh, guy working at Ghost? Ooh, <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's a few like steps to that. So mm -hmm. when, so in my like second job, like when I was a few years into my job, I did, like I said, I did anchor themes.com and that was, that was all like under my own steam in my spare time. And thankfully I had the spare time to, to do it in. And the, 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 the <laughs> I remember that moment, like making it, cause this is the first like open source or anything that I'd done online. Mm. And my friend, I was saying to my friend, like, ah, oh, there should be like a directory site of all of these themes for this platform. And he was like, you know, you could do that. <laughs> and that domain is free. Yeah. You could, well, it's available. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And then before I know it, I'm like building it and just having a go. And I'm just using ftp like classic like uh, <laughs> web development yeah. um and just chucking it all together mm -hmm. uh and then i would share it and then i started like getting into github and um getting involved with like because work we're using it for code and then i was using it in my spare time to do like helping with anchor cms community mm -hmm. and then i kind of met the people who work on anchor cms and kind of grew into that area on github and try to help people build stuff cool. with it and then it just kind of grew from there and i did the kind of same thing with jekyll like mm -hmm. the static site generator so that mm -hmm. kind of played around with that more and and as i was doing all of this i was kind of speaking to all sorts of people through mostly twitter like i'm on twitter a lot and um there's a lot of people i know through twitter and i've made a lot of friends through twitter and one of them being john um uh founder of ghost and he he just kept in touch with me over the years like i keep working on things and we chat every so often and he would ask me for help with css <laughs> he, he'd just call me up or well he would tweet me um so he just kind of kept in touch and he contacted me like out of the blue saying do you think you could do like an advocate kind of role and I was like well I've never thought about it really and like but I guess I could I've been doing a lot of open source stuff and I like tweeting about what I make and mm. writing stuff and doing mm. stuff with Copen um I was like oh yeah let's have a go at that and kind of went through the interview process and yeah it kind of all worked out really well like I've, I guess it helped with, like, I do a lot of documentation writing as well. Mm. Like, I've done documentation for Basekit, which is a mm -hmm. site builder. Um, I worked there for a couple of years and helped with building out the kind of developer community for that and writing documentation for it. And I did a, I did a screencast series on how to build a theme for it. So mm. it was it all kind all the stuff that I was doing, mm. like whether it to do with work, but mostly in my spare time that mm. I was just doing out of my own steam. Mm. It was kind of an advocate role. I'm doing all this stuff anyway. Can I ask what, what you, because you've you mentioned a couple of times that you were doing stuff off your own steam, you know, like almost side projects esque. So mm. it's sort of like, you know, you, you come back from your paid job and then you do some more work on these, on these additional projects, anchor CMS and so forth. Mm. What it what what is the driving force for that? Um, I, I'll put an asterisk before this. Now, okay. for me, I had the the privilege of living with my mum and my mum cooking for me and stuff like that. Nice. So you know, I would come home and pretty much food is on the table. So I, and I and 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 I like to not take that for granted. I would be very grateful for that. So mm -hmm. I had the time to really have a go like you know it it would either be oh xbox or like <laughs> or um do some code or something like that and uh, aside from those the drug for me was like oh, that's, good. that's a good question i can't i'm not really sure i can like pinpoint it for like what what kept me going i think i think it was just 
I think I just had like a super interest in it and just had interest in every area. Like I remember at one point looking into schema data for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. putting on anchor themes and I just looked it up and I'd seen it at work for a moment or two and I thought, Do you know what, I'm gonna have a look at that and I look and I just went to town and went into all the detail I could put I could as far as I could go because I just wanted to find out about it and work mm. it out. Mm. And I think I think that drive causes me to do the best work like in work hours. It's always something where I go, how how does that work? And what can I do with it that can improve what we've already got? Sure. Like this morning I um somebody said to me, how can I put ghost posts or ghost articles into a Jekyll site and someone said oh you could use gulp or something like that and I was like yeah you could use that and then like an hour later I worked out how to do it and just created a file that they can then I could send to them in a gist and like thought well it's something to go with it's not perfect but it's it's there's potential there's something yeah to go with. so it sounds like you're constantly seeking knowledge and and improvement yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is an uh, an awesome trait to have because it's it's sort of like, you know, a conveyable bell of knowledge, um, which is which is cool. I like the fact that you've gone from print design, and y- mm. you've now sort of finding every possible avenue of of uh, what your uh, your your current applications can do. Mm. Um, and uh, how they can integrate with other other things, which we'll talk about more in just a second. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, so right now, what is it that you're currently focusing on? Is it is it uh, purely ghost? It is. It is. I have to say, there's been a few times where I've said to John, I've said, "This is what I've been doing in my spare time. Like, what do I do in my spare <laughs> time now? <laughs> like, do I not?" And I've been trying to like kind of find a balance to like make sure I don't kind of go to sure right yeah because yeah I totally get that because it's sort of like am I right in thinking um that you see this as both a hobby as as well as a job more very much more so now because all the all but one of the places I was working at before I've worked at like was it four or five different places Mm. they've all been like all but one an agency and it's that I'm sure you know that kind of atmosphere you kind of deadlines and it kind of cycles through you go through the same motions and and it's you're you're you almost feel like you're constantly like running and mm. then there'll be gaps of just nothing and yeah so this feels a lot different this is a lot like it's constantly working upon and constantly being added to so i guess what i'm going to be working on at ghost is producing things that people can like start their site with or concepts you know Mm -hmm. like even if it's just like inspiration Mm -hmm. to like say oh well I could do well I could do a podcast series I Mm -hmm. could make a podcast show like website and use ghost to edit the content put the transcripts in or something like that Um, I think I think before we go any further I think it would be a good idea to just define what ghost is um, for uh, for, for those that uh, haven't heard of of, of ghost yet What, what, what does ghost do so Ghost is a it's a professional publishing platform to kind of do the the spiel, but uh, <laughs> so it, it's a publishing platform, but it, it it can be used in a kind of variety of ways. It does follow the the typical conventions of posts and pages, and we've got users, and mm-hmm. those users can contribute posts and create pages and things like that. It's it's the typical. It is kind of the typical CMS, but it's very much focused on publishing, web publishing. And that I, that I really like because mm-hmm. it, there's a lot of CMSs out there that are kind of a bit of a uh, jack of all trades. Sure. And they, they kind of have a lot of fields and boxes and toggles and stuff like that when really Ghost is a focused publishing method, whether that be a blog, whether mm-hmm. that be a documentation site um whether that be a typical five page you know contact us about me paid website that you know all sorts Mm -hmm. and um we pride ourselves on the concept that you you do own your actually own your content you know there's other platforms where 
the <laughs> terms and conditions are a bit ambiguous. I'm, I'm trying not to name names, but we'll probably end up naming names uh, in a moment. Um, but you do actually own your content. And the other the other plus part to, to Ghost is that it's completely open source. It's it's a it's a platform that you can install on DigitalOcean in a couple of clicks, and it, you could you could use it that way. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you could you could do it that way, or you can you could host it anywhere. Um, so does it? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. So does this mean that right. you don't need to be a coder, a developer, to just to use it? No. No, you could you can sign up the the Ghost. Ghost Pro, as our service, is essentially a hosted version of Ghost that we maintain ourselves. Okay. And we have different plans depending on what you're doing with them or, or what, how many users you're going to have and stuff like that. So it's pretty much the same thing, but we have our customer support mm. and all the kind of bits and pieces around it. But the, the installation that you would install on DigitalOcean and the installation that we have is the same. Right. So we, 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 it's another thing that we pride ourselves on yeah. is something that's open source and yeah. we have people contributing all the time on GitHub. Right. Right. That's really cool. Oh, I like that. Now, when, when people say publishing platform, um, they, they usually go gravitate towards the WordPresses of the world. Mm. Um, where does ghost fit? Where does, what's the difference between say WordPress and ghost? So, yeah, we do get this kind of comparison uh, comparison quite often. I've got some notes here from John, like, on kind of things you would say to do with that. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I've used WordPress for a number of years, and the, the user interface does swell, for, a better, for a lack of a better term. It does seem to add and develop over time. I mean, for example, Gutenberg, is it was quite a kind of shift along and 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 people had to kind of accommodate for that and mm. and while it has its benefits and a very like interesting exciting user experience mm -hmm. um at ghost we tend to spend more time focusing on those features in a more precise manner so when we released our like new editing experience yes we did have kind of you could add cards into an article but that article experience is pretty much the same kind of what you would expect in kind of typical, I don't know, like typical WordPress or you know, typical blogging kind of mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. platform. It's, 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 it's an editing experience that you would expect, like not something that's, that's got loads of collateral like buttons of kind of saying, Oh, you, you could put a featured color here or featured image there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have some of those components, but we like to kind of focus on those parts. And um, a lot of the like plugins that come with WordPress and then there is, you know, it's infinite. It goes mm -hmm. on for, for, for years, how many plugins there are and they do such amazing and different things. And personally, I found that I install a series of plugins and the client will never use those plugins. They'll never fully utilize what those components are like say they want to use like they want to change the color of the background on a certain post or something like that and in reality the client will never change that color but you provide them with the option and you spend all this time integrating these things and yeah. really you just yeah. need a little like bit of code injection or you I, just have I, I totally get that i totally get that i had a, a client once and uh, i installed a plugin on wordpress and it was only because the client needed to do a spe one specific task and this plugin did it very, very well. However, it did all sorts of other things. And I had to mm. say, don't touch that. Don't, don't, go, don't yeah. go down that right rabbit hole. That's not good. Uh, I don't know what that does. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a great example because you, you, you install a plugin and, and you would, it would be lovely if it was just a toggle, but right. really it comes with a whole load of other, sure. other bits and pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to hide it, trying to hide it with some like CSS or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, the uh, I've 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 I have in in the past tried to hide the update, um, the, the, the actual <laughs> pushing the update uh, because I, yeah, that's a couple of clients ago. It was sort of like things would break and it would be I would be caught up because they've tried to do an update themselves. And of course mm -hmm. that updates the whole database and everything. Just, and yeah, 
and it's like yeah, oh yeah. no but we had just to add to that that we had that at one of my previous agencies Gutenberg got introduced and we were hosting a site on WP engine mm-hmm. and WP engine is like automatic updates here we go like and it and it just it just whacked Gutenberg in and then it broke all the rest of the javascript on the on the install and I was just we we couldn't find the time to actually go back and and fix that issue but we'd literally done nothing right and automatic updates had just introduced it and Gutenberg was there yeah. and we d- we didn't want it. And we're like, how do we turn it off? And we couldn't even turn it off because the JavaScript mm-hmm. was required to like toggle it back. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I understand your gripes. And you know, you know, trying to talk this issue through with with a client mm. is quite difficult because it's like, well, surely that's a stupid thing to have. That's their answer. It's like, why is this feature even available to me? Yes, yeah, yes, and that's a, that's another thing. Like they 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 often even if you say to them this CMS that I've given you I have not built it it's WordPress it's open source um they still think that you've built it from scratch right, and you're yeah. like you're you are master of command and commander of this whole landscape that is their website and you're like no <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't do all of this I did this like little bit here yeah but- yeah. And it takes long enough to install this, let alone build something like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah. By the way, we, I don't I, at Ghost. I don't think we do automatic updates. You can update, and you can get the latest version of Ghost. But if your site is using a particular like version of a tool or anything, we don't kind of force the update system onto people. Okay. Um, okay. Try to be try to be kind of diplomatic with that. That's good. I like that. It's it's more, yeah. I like that. It's a gentler approach. Um, yes. Yeah. So how 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 is the how is Ghost version? Does it does it use um, sort of Semver type stuff? You know, semantic versioning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a typical kind of versioning setup. We're on V two at the minute. Um, so yeah, I need to get more familiar with that. As I said, of like. Mm-hmm. I've been here a, a month and three weeks, and <laughs> um, I'm getting familiar with the uh, the whole code base and that. Um, but I think I contributed to the core like on day one, so oh, that's cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is this all on GitHub? Yes, so it's all on GitHub. You can go to GitHub.com/slash/tryghost/slash/ghost, mm-hmm. and that is the open source project. We would have slash ghost as a username, but GitHub have that name spaced for like when users are deleted, they turn into a ghost. Oh, so we can't, cool. I don't think we I, could ever have a I never username knew that. ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's such an awesome name. Ghost. Oh uh, yeah. We, yeah. We, so we've got, we've got it for like other, so we've already got, got it for Twitter. So we're just mm. ghost on Twitter and ghost on Instagram and stuff mm. like that. Well, I'll leave links in the show notes below for that. Uh, um, yeah, so how, at a, at a rough guess, how many um, uh, websites use Ghost? Oh, that is such a, that's a great question because I d- genuinely don't know because it's just, it's, it, it's loads. I mean, we don't, I, I don't have like, like a big, like data set of like how many users we have on Ghost. I'm sure if I went on the website right now, sorry, there's a fly in here. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm sure if we went on the website, I could go and like find the numbers in that, but I don't really want to read off. No, like, that's cool. Things. I suppose I could, give you, I could give you some examples. Sure. Like, do that. Uh, yeah. Do that. I, but before ghost. you do that, I, I guess, I guess it's very difficult to track down the actual f- finite number because mm-hmm. being an open source type thing, um, you know, there'll be, yeah. there'll be the, the, the people who want intranets. So sort of like only internally <laughs> facing things yeah. built on, on their internal ghost platform. And you'll never know that people will just no. download it and have done. Um, but yeah, what, what kind of, what kind of um, clients do you, do you have? So we've got, we've got people like we have got digital ocean using it nice. and we've got Mozilla. I've got a few like copied out from here. Quite like that. We've got Emojipedia using ghost <laughs> as their uh, blog and Airtable and Cloudflare and, 
the ones that were pretty cool, like literally the other day, Open Collective said mm. that they'd switched their blog mm. over to Ghost, mm. and you can actually contribute to Ghost on Open Collective. So it, it's cool. kind of full circle now. So if you want to contribute and like <laughs> you read the blog, it's kind of yeah, it's the open source inception loop. right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, we also had Free Code Camp that switched over from uh medium to uh their own ghost installation right so they, they're completely like they they have their own install and they're setting it up and uh they brought everything over so they're in the process of kind of expanding on that now yes yes you did mention earlier about there was a a couple of incidents shall we say where platforms would um uh not allow the uh the ownership um, of content yes yeah, so i think i think mediums terms and conditions say that you kind of you both own it so they have they have kind of ownership but you also have ownership um personally from a front end kind of minded person whenever i go onto a medium blog post on my phone there is a lot of collateral pieces on there you'll see a lot of like pop-ups and suggestions and and I, I can't imagine what it looks like when you're not logged in i have an account but i don't have any articles on there but it, it is quite difficult to have a clean reading experience um because the, at the I, I hate to say at the end of the day but i'm going to say at the end of the day uh at the end of the day um the most the people that should benefit the most are the people that are reading your content so mm. you want them to have a really good reading experience. Right. And, you know, like a lot of people, a lot of people set up a, a ghost account and then just use Casper, which is our default theme. And people are pretty happy with that. Like even yeah. some of our pe big people like Emoji pe Emojipedia uses Casper, but with their own modifications to it, because it's just such a nice kind of reading experience. It's, it's, it's clean design. Um, and all of our themes are kind of aimed to be like that mm. and we don't want kind of collateral bits and pieces around it mm. uh you know mm. like i'm sure everybody's sick of clicking the cookie banner and stuff like well, that well i don't have an account uh on, on on that platform um but it is a bit like a playing roulette sometimes when you land on it you get a you know a, a little pop-up coming up and sometimes you don't and it's it's different when you're so yeah if i was reading it on my phone i'll have a different experience to reading it on my Tab on my laptop and tablet um i guess they track the amount of articles you've read or something like that they and do then, and then they they do even if you're not logged in they right they track it by like the ip or whatever mm. and um i think i recently read that there's a there's like a bug in chrome incognito where they were still able to track oh you to kind of find out how many articles you've read Oof. so you know, if you're trying to have a if you're trying to have a better reading experience of a medium article, then you then incognito mode might be better now than it was before. Uh, actually, reading the whole article without bits over the top, but I uh, don't don't vouch, don't uh, quote me on that. Mm -hmm. No worries, no worries. Um, okay, um, what technologies then? What are what's the technology stack of Ghost? So technology stack, I can talk about a bit. I mean, sure. I'm I'm not a Node expert, but I do know it is it's built on Node.js, and we have the so it's kind of split into sort of three components. So you mm -hmm. have the Node application itself, kind of the core of it, and then we have an Ember.js admin client part to it, mm -hmm. and then the the front end, as in the theme part of it. So where Casper would live the theme for that or or other themes that is a handlebars theming engine in there so you can kind of upload your own themes using nice and code it all out with handlebars files and stuff like that we've got all the documentation for that so that's the kind of three components mm -hmm. but I I will I will say that those components are interchangeable but I won't go into that that's cool. just yet because i don't want to I, I keep i feel like i'm derailing everything on time that's in fine questions. no you go into any avenue that's fine um so what so it's no js that's the back end right that's the that, yes that'll be the back end of it so uh, does this mean therefore that the front end communicates to the back end using perhaps apis is there or is there more of a direct direct connection 
So with the handlebars part, that is more direct. That right. comes bundled with, like, if you were to install Ghost on its own, that's what you would get out of the box. Mm-hmm. However, if you want to interchange that front end for, I don't know, Gatsby or some kind of front end stack of yeah. whatever you want, you can use the Ghost API with that site and pull in all of the content from there and pull it into your Gatsby site. Hey, that or... is awesome. I really do like this whole headless CMS type world. I, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. This is because uh, you, you, you've, you've immediately opened yourself up to, to so many different possibilities. Um, yeah. Well, this, this, this kind of got introduced just before I started and the, that, that was a long-term aim, I think, from what I've seen in people's comments and stuff from the team. Like it was a, a long-term aim to kind of go into that direction where are uh, these separate components become detached. Can you hear the neighbor's dog? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Uh, sorry, yeah, he's cold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the, these um, these com- these components can be interchanged, and that was a kind of plan uh, all along and. Obviously, this Jamstack thing has just been like accelerating mm. at an incredible rate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw it firsthand when I went to Jamstack conference um, a few weeks back in London. And th- that was a huge turnout there. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of people talking about all sorts of different techniques and tooling that we can do with this, quote, Jamstack setup. Um, yeah. and I know that's a bit of a buzzword, but really, th- there's a lot of possibilities with that. And you can start using stuff you enjoy more. So that that's what I like. Like, as I said, I did Jekyll before and I quite liked the templating engine and, you know, big on the theming part of it. But bringing that to a, you know, like a big monolith application, it becomes a bit difficult. You kind of have to start bending to mm-hmm. your own mm-hmm. stack. Like a great example would be Magento. I'm sure you've worked with Magento mm-hmm. before. Yeah. You start having to template it towards their conventions and their stack. You, you, where... Yeah, you you become you you start developing within the ecosystem that you're you're within, um, and so you think when you come across a problem and you need a solution, you think of the solution in terms of of that bounded uh, ecosystem yes. that you're you're working within, right? So. Uh, but if you if you removed that that fence that you're in, and you allowed yourself to use other technologies, that that would make your life so much so much easier. However, it does make things slightly more complicated sometimes um, because now you're uh, yeah. I guess it's like moving parts. A lot of moving parts. Sure, so it can become a bit unwieldy. Yeah, it can be, and and, and because you know you've opened yourself up to many wor- worlds. And you could have many worlds of pain. So, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's 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 one of those things you kind of kind of have to suck it and see. I think. Um, mm. But um, I mean, I've used Jekyll, I've used Sculpin, I've used uh, Gatsby. The thing that I really like about Gatsby is the fact that um, I can pull in data from from other places, and you know, that's that that was the whole sort of push for me to actually use Gatsby. Was I was yeah. I wanted to create an API for the for, for um, one of the sites that I was building, but I didn't have the time to build the API at the, at that moment in time, right? So what I what I did was I created a JSON structure that represented the API endpoints uh, without right, the yes. API even in existence yet. So now I know how the data is going to be structured. I can now build the API and the front end will never, you know, there wouldn't need to be many changes to the front end for that to happen. So I've completely yeah. decoupled the, the data and the representation of that data. Um, and the problem with the other, when you, when you don't have that opportunity, you end up, um, if you want to change the platform that you're working within, I find that I end up having to scrape the existing website um, of data because the data itself, the raw data is so coupled with the, the design, the front end, how it's packaged up. Mm. Um, and they all do it slightly differently. So some front matters are slightly different than others. And yes, yeah, I found that with, I, I encountered that issue with Jekyll, like, cause you can switch between markdown conventions and then mm. there's this slight disparity in that. But 
the concept of an API has been like around for a very long time and it, it seems almost weird that we're kind of going oh APIs like they look suddenly <laughs> like cool now yeah and, and really they're, they're, they've been there the whole time and they do it all pretty much exactly the same way and and like you said with Gatsby you can kind of pull in content from all the different sources like mm. we're we're using a kind of combination of markdown files and and ghost itself to build out our documentation so obviously we've got a lot of documentation to manage and mm. we kind of benefit from having different source points to kind of bring in all that content and then the final thing is this one site this one build mm. and again like I another example I thought of um, was I, I used in a previous job I used share tribe which is this kind of marketplace tool okay um it's, so it. you could build your uh, your own gum tree or something oh, like okay. that mm -hmm. and it was really good at just doing that but it wasn't good at just editing pages you couldn't do any of that in there but if you had ghost you could just plug in that because it was the the front end was a react application so you could just plug that api straight into there right. and build out all your terms and conditions pages you could put a blog in there right. you could add so much functionality and not really like tear the whole site apart in order to fit in this new thing or take the whole front end and then skin it on top of something else and then mm. go oh for you tr and you're trying so hard to make it look exactly the same but it's using a completely different stack right it's, yeah. it's like what you're saying with switching out json for an api like all you'll have to deal with is the data like mm -hmm. there's the, the front end won't know any different mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to that's the mm. that's the kind of Cool no, part. definitely. It's um, uh, yeah, and doing it like that, you, 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 it's a different mindset. It's a, it's a different sort of. I don't just live in this this little world. I live in these worlds, um, mm. and yeah, there's far more overhead with that because you have to update everything, and you know, there's my there's lots of moving parts yeah. and all of this jazz. So it's not just suddenly a a nice rosy field of of um lovely unicorns jumping around it's it's actually something that is extra stress on the face of it um yeah it, it's it just allows you to do so much more than um than what you what you could do in your own little sort of ecosystem that you're working in mm. so with ghost then that that has an api so you could you could use other front ends is that right yeah you could use other front ends nice. and i like how you i like how you segue to that because in theory you can actually use different back ends as well wow weird, a weird convention right but trust me with this so there is an api for the front end so mm. you can build out gatsby you can build a view or what have you but what if you wanted to use your favorite markdown editor or if you want to use a some kind of word pressing, processing application, mm. you can use the Ghost API and plug into that that direction. So wow. um, there's a Markdown editor called Ulysses, and they have a Ghost integration. Do you use it? I've used it before. Yes, I have. I've, ah. I, I, I wrote a few articles back in the day using Ulys oh. Ulysses, and uh, is it iWriter? Writer, something like that. Uh, hey, yes, I I've used it before. I didn't realize there was an integration to Ghost, but that is so cool. Yes, so you can write in that Markdown app yeah. and then plug, and then that content gets sent straight over to your Ghost blog. And then if you wanted to, then you could switch that back over to, I don't know, like Gads, Gadsby or View or whatever. You could anything, you could just go through there. So then Ghost becomes more of this kind of my go mind's blown content <laughs> management. Pardon? Yeah, my mind's blown. That's really cool. <laughs> wow. So you could use something that isn't even on the web to build no. No. a website. I mean, in theory, you could you, you could use some you could. I I was thinking about what if you had a React Native application and you had terms and conditions inside that React application, mm. and you want to update that content in there. You mm. could use Ghost and just have the API inside the React Native app. Yeah, pull down the terms and conditions, like do an update with that, or have you've got like extra content in your react native app you could update it there mm -hmm. and then you could update it on the gatsby site and you you know that disparity would then never happen because the content's being sourced from exactly the same place wow and you could be doing that all from 
yeah, Ulysses or um, I'll have to check what the other markdown editing tools are. But yes, yeah. you can do that. There's there's an API on that side of the coin. Gosh, because yeah, I, I started writing uh, a, a few months back um, and I was looking for markdown alternatives that weren't my IDE. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I found Ulysses and iWriter um, and, and they're really nice because they just focus on the writing. They don't, they don't, you know, obviously your IDE has so much other responsibilities to deal with. Um, and they're, they're, they're for, you know, for authors writing novels and books and articles and, and all that jazz. So, and I was thinking, as I was doing, it, I was thinking, well, this, you could use this in, in, so in, in companies where you've got copywriters, you know, writing mm. things. So by having the integration with ghost from that perspective, you've, you've now opened the door to different departments, writing content yeah. on yes. a website. It's not just the web developers. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. We, we it, it's kind of the intention to become this, this go between this service mm. and you know, that, 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 those APIs can pull everything out. Like, um if i may like i we, we recently like yesterday was it yesterday yes it was yesterday um we launched a 11t starter have you ever used 11t before it's no. a static site generator it's a it's it's quite popular in jamstack community at the minute it's, it's growing very quickly and it has all the traits of jekyll mm -hmm. but it's a node static site generator so it builds it through javascript and you can use javascript Okay. Um, pretty kind of similar to how you were doing it with Gulp, mm. but you can create kind of collections and stuff like that. And I built a starter so you can use that with Ghost. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what was I? Where was I going with that? I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> I've lost tra track now. What was I saying? Eleven T, and then I was saying about the starter. Um. What, were you, what did you ask before? We, we, were, we, we were talking about the integrations between um, the, the back end and the front end where people who are non-web developers can actually build, write articles um, uh, without the web right, development right. department uh, being involved. I think, I think I was just thinking about kind of the, the, there's so much kind of agnostic possi possibilities mm. you could kind of building it out into mm. all sorts of different things. So yeah, like Eleventy Starter was like a an avenue for pulling content through. That's what I was saying. I've just remembered now because <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's right. It was to do with um so they're all all the different kind of collection groups or data sets that we've got coming from the API. We have literally everything coming out. So mm. when I was building it out, I was like there's there's authors in here, there's tags in here, there's uh custom post types in here mm. there's pages in there there's 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 update dates there's published dates there's edited dates and things like that mm. all the data was there and you can just tell the api give me this give me give me the author and then give me all their posts mm -hmm. and like put it all into a page like that and i can mm. i can sort through that content however i wish and then once i'm happy with it in that format I can then switch over to my favorite templating language. That's one of the benefits of Eleventy is mm -hmm. you can use any kind of popular templating engine in it. Mm -hmm. So I was using Nunchucks. So I just used Nunchucks and I could just loop through posts and output the title, output the content. And, mm -hmm. you know, before you know it it, 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 it was surprisingly quick to do. Nice. Yeah, nice. It's, it, this is, this is, these tools are all making things more efficient for for uh, people writing articles, and and I, I really dig that, uh, especially when you've got a tool that can talk to another tool in a common language, mm. um, that it just makes things so much easier and slicker to to use. Um, talking about Ghost specifically, you say you've you've been working in in your current role for a, a month and, and and three weeks, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What, what have you been doing in that in that sort of period of time? So, 
uh, yeah, besides from like that Eleventy starter, I have been. Mm. I've just kind of been immersing myself mm. in the community side, absorbing of things all and the trying... knowledge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of, just so much to pull in, and yeah. um, I'm sure it's just going to continue for you know months and years to yeah. kind of really understand everything that that's going on mm -hmm. in all different areas of like the team and the the application itself and the options that we've got available to us and. So, yeah, I've kind of been growing my knowledge to do with Ghost itself mm -hmm. and um, experimenting. I've been trying to, like, play with a few things and try stuff out and mm. um, speak to the community. We've got a forum. It's um, it's just forum.ghost.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's quite a kind of active community there. And people are always asking, like, how can we do this? Or is there a way to do that? And... Here's my site that I built with Ghost. Um, here's my site that I built with the Gatsby Starter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that that's really cool. And I dip in there. I dip in there pretty much every day to kind of help with people, help people work out how to do things, or kind of just chat. Uh, yeah, and then talk on Twitter as well. I kind of get myself involved with the Jamstack community. Um, kind of listening out for what people are interested by and what they might want to do with something like ghost mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and trying to understand a bit of awareness as well because before me there wasn't anybody who was like full-on developer advocate at ghost like pe everybody in the team were kind of making up for that part sure. in their own way yeah. yeah so i've kind of taken that space you say team right so do you know like off the top of your head how many people are working in at, at ghost I believe it was either John said the other day it was 15 or 17 because right. we've just had a couple of people like join very, very recently. I think it might be 17. Right. Uh, yes. And um, are, are these, are these all sort of, do they, do they, um, are, are they located in this, a similar sort of area? Cause I know that you're <laughs> Bristol based. right? <laughs> I am Bristol based. Uh, there is one other person that is Bristol based uh, and the rest of the team, I all over the planet, like <laughs> completely like distributed company. There is, there is no physical like office. Right. Um, obviously we've got a registered company, sure. but um, it's completely like distributed. So we've got people in the States, we've got people in Australia, mm -hmm. we've got people in Singapore, India, uh thailand you know, yeah. er everywhere i like that everywhere I like that. I like that it's it's um yeah so so everything's sort of remote and distributed almost like yes. the the fact that you can use many different sources for your content <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> you said it not me <laughs> great great nice 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 pitch <laughs> so what what uh what what are you allowed to talk about some of the features that might be coming up with with ghost um i wish i could but right. i don't think i can no, partially cool. because um i don't know all of them <laughs> um i don't know what's being worked on i mean the the funny thing is is like a lot of like the stuff that will be coming up to be put into ghost you will mm. most likely see in a github commit well, anyway it's, it's yeah. kind of you see it anyway so it's, it's it, we 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 are we supposed we 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 like to be as open as possible and sometimes it is to our detriment because someone might tweet it out before we even get a chance to share the knowledge but um yeah i can tell you what we have got recently released so sure. like we were just saying there is the gatsby starter uh project mm -hmm. that you can use um We'll have to put the link in the show notes. I don't want to read that off because it's quite a long. Sure. URL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we've got eleven T as well. Mm -hmm. Eleven T. You can spell eleven T one one T Y if you want to. You can Google <laughs> that. Um, so we've got a starter for that, and both of those come with documentation that we have on our own site. So you can find them out, and they will help you with not only using the Gatsby Star or the eleven T starter, but just how the API works. Mm and how to use that like the cool thing about the 11t one is that if you open up the file 
that pulls in the data from Ghost. It is just a JavaScript file that's just pulling pulling it from the API, like uh, the AP, the content API library that we have. Mm. It's 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 almost like it's almost like un like not exciting javascript <laughs> it's it's almost like boring and and some a lot of people would say boring is good because it's kind of expected yeah definitely yeah yeah it is it is is if it's exciting if it's too exciting then there's a problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, a thrilling ride of yeah. uh, confusion and uh distributed files all over the <laughs> yeah Cool. Okay. So that sounds really good. Um, the, 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 the features of ghosts, do they also include things like videos and audio sort of media type stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, the integrations list is, is quite long and I, and I would, I'd love to read them out, but we will be here all day, um, <laughs> going through all of them because, you know, there's, there's, there's things like, um, so I was talking about the editing experience before. We have this kind of concept of cards, and mm. you can add a card into your content. So that card could be um, a form. So it could be a type form form, or it could be a MailChimp form, okay. or it could be a Gumroad product or something like that. You can kind of put these things in line. So you could do like video integration. It could be a native video, or it could be done on YouTube or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, We've got like, and I I quite like this one because I'm going to be using it. Is the CodePen one, so you can just give it the URL of your CodePen, and then it will just plonk it straight there as like the embedded version. Oh, that's nice. Yes, I like that. Yeah, mm, I might give that a play. So, uh, before we head off, there's a question that I would like to ask, and I'm going to ask this to everyone who comes on the show, and that is, if you could have a conversation with your former self. What web dev advice would you give? And it can be more than one. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good question because, um, but I bet for a lot of a lot of other developers, they will think they will be kind of thinking about they'll be want to go and learn and they want to go and like find out as much as possible and things like that. Mm -hmm. And and that is a thing that you will a lot of people do anyway. You know, they always want to find out more. They always want to do that. And you will do that. Um, but you you learn so much from, like, sharing. And once I started sharing stuff, whether that be on GitHub, whether that be on Twitter, whether that be on, like, community forums and stuff like that, that accelerated things exponentially to where I am now. Like, I owe it all to, like, making something and then sharing it. So if I was to go back and tell myself anything, it would be to like, you know, that thing you were thinking of doing, mm. you should do that and you should share it, even if it looks broken, even if it doesn't quite work right, because you will either learn something because someone will tell you you're doing it wrong or someone will go, wow, that is really cool. I'm going to share that and it will get it will get you to places that's a, a lot more to your interests, mm. like. You know, if you've got the, if you, if you, if you're lucky enough to get the spare time to work on stuff that you're just interested in and you want to share it, then do it and then share it. Mm. And writing, you know, like collaterally, writing is like such a, a beneficial thing. Um, I, I listen to, do you listen to Shop Talk Show, the podcast? Um, no, I haven't done that. I'll add it to my list. Yeah. That's, um, that's Chris Coyer and Dave Rupert's show. And um, Rachel Andrews was on there who works on Perch CMS. Okay. Um, and she also works on Smashing Magazine. And I heard mm -hmm. a quote from her. It was great. And, and I can't get it word for word. But basically she said, whenever I go and, like, learn how to do something for work or something like that, I might as well write about it now because I've learned how to do it. So if you've learned something at work and you've figured out how to do something or you've learned something in your spare time and you've worked it out, you might as well write it down, even if it's just for you, and then post it online. Like, because you've spent the time to work it out, you might as well share it. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, anyway I can't that... take credit for that. That's Rachel Andrews' like, <laughs> uh, comment. That's, that's 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 registered trademark kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I dig that. It's a, it's a very sharing and writing. Um, I like the way that you you said, regardless of whether it works, because yeah. 
because if you and I find this with live streaming when I do my live coding, it's very raw, right? So mm. a lot of the, they can see the problems that I'm having, and they can see the the uh, the solution quicker than I can because there's more of them than there is of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody, including myself, is learning. Yes, uh, and and that and that I think is is such a powerful thing that us educators can, can p- tap into is the sharing of knowledge um, mm. and sharing of solutions. So yeah, I totally yeah. did that. Totally did that. Um, before we, before we round up, is there, is there anything that, else that you want to mention regarding ghost? Uh, no, I mean, uh, uh, no, I think that's, I think that's it. I really, I was just going to start reaming off all like the handles and things like that to do with <laughs> like who, who are, who are, who am I and who, who are ghosts and stuff like that. So yeah, I feel like I've filled your mind with lots of ghost things lots of, and <laughs> lots of me things enough. So. No worries, no worries. So how can people get hold of you? So the best form is on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I am David Darns on on Twitter. So that's D-A-V-I-D-D-A-R-N-E-S. Cool. cool. <laughs> and um, uh, ghost is just ghost on Twitter. Um and you can find me. I write on my blog mm-hmm. on david.darn.es. Very e- awkward domain. Yes, uh, but I'm nice. quite I'm quite pleased about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or you can just go to you can just go to davidarns.com. It's fine. Cool. It'll, it'll redirect. <laughs> uh, and ghost is ghost.org on there. Um, we have our docs, which is ghost.org/slash docs mm-hmm. and you can find out lots about ghost on there. Mm. Lots of different resources on there. Mm-hmm. Um, We've also got the forum, forum.ghost.org. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. I think that's everything. Awesome. Well, I'll I'll um I'll catch all of those. If you could send me all of those links, I'll put them all in the show notes below. Yes, um, and uh, I'll put some up on screen here too. But thank you ever so much, uh, Dave, for coming on. I do appreciate your time and talking about ghosts. Um, it sounds like an awesome platform. I'm going to check it out myself. Great. Um, yeah. Um, thank you for inviting me on the show. It's really kind of you. It's uh, great it's, to meet you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. It's been awesome. So thank you ever so much, everyone, for um, watching on the YouTubes and listening on the podcasts. Happy coding, everyone. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> so the record button has been pressed. <laughs> this is where I get the giggles. <laughs> Should I do, should I not look or like... Oh, you can look anywhere you want. You could hide under the table (laughs) for for all I know. Just hide. (laughs) Yeah, I'm talking to a chair. (laughs) Just take take the microphone under there. (laughs) (laughs) Under the desk. (laughs) Uh, Cool. Okay. Oh, I've, 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 done <laughs> yeah. it. I've ruined it. It's called like corpsing, isn't it? Like yeah. in, um, on stage when yeah. they just giggles, they kind of do it. All right. No, serious. Let's okay. Go. Okay. Go cool. Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today we're going to be talking about Ghost, the publication platform. I'm joined by Dave Darns. Hi Dave. How's it going? Have you had a good week?